in, in addition to to building things that demonstrate your ideas. Yes. You've also been developing your ideas continuously. Oh yes. Well, what has that been about? What has been some of the what are some of the ideas that you've changed or added? Well, in the early days, I pictured the buildings going up in uh, with some assistance of machines. Later, I devised particular types of machines that can erect particular kinds of buildings very quickly. During the early stages, they will have the appearance of mechanisms like you see here. Each one of these robots are designed to cover a certain amount of functions, starting with this type of robot, which would be typical which will handle materials of many different configurations and move them and position them and lock them in place. During the early stages, you're going to have different machines. At the later stages of nanotechnology, the machines will be able to undergo morphing or changing their shape to accommodate whatever project lies before them. This represents a relatively complex aluminum extrusion. Those of you that are not familiar with that, if you were to take a toothpaste tube and cut the letter T in the opening and squeeze the toothpaste, it would come out like a letter T. And this is how extrusions are made. However, in the future, it may be possible to extrude complete apartment houses apartment building units or modules. The machine would extrude the apartments, then they'd be cut automatically to length. This lift unit places the apartment or module onto this crane, which then lifts it up and advances it forward. So it locks into the twin towers. It is coupled together automatically, requiring no human labor. This extruder can be faced with different dies to mold different shapes. Almost an infinite variety of shapes can be extruded. So it would be the apartment of your preference that's extruded. There's a similar machine operated by tractors and advances toward the building and then projects the segment of a building directly into that hole and it's locked into place. So any shape or almost any extruded shape can be designed to fit many different architectural arrangements. The interiors of the buildings, by the way, will not be fabricated unless specified before the building is constructed. After the building is constructed, the appointments in the building are selected by the occupant, the kind of furniture, the color arrangements, etc. All television sets, all radios, all communication devices slip in to zones in the ceiling or wall, and you pull them out and put the latest stuff in. They don't change every year except the quality of the imagery. Units of design today don't fit in with the house. You have to kind of stick them somewhere. And so the future will look like it was born that way, a lot like the human body. You don't have an eye hanging out there on a strut which you pull back, and that's what furniture looks like. The interior of a house to me looks like a lot of stuff piled up. It doesn't look like it was born that way. It doesn't fare together like most natural things do. This is a transitional type structure which utilizes cranes to lift the components of the building. Eventually, the building itself will be part of the self-erecting structure.
If there are particular areas that people do not want to live in or seem not to want to live in, we can build underground cities in the polar regions, tremendous cities, quarter of a mile in diameter. The height of the dome is high enough so it's near the surface with a tremendous circle which daylight comes in through. The outer perimeter will serve as the apartments. The intersection will have lakes and tennis courts and fields and parks. As you see these surrounding elements here, there are elevator shafts in them. And in those elevators are transveyors that take you anywhere in the city and take you to the outer surface where you can go skiing and hiking and do whatever you want with winter sports. There's also transportation above and underground to the next city. Under certain conditions, we can project the movement of clouds onto the ceiling so it doesn't feel like you're living in a subterranean city. People picture an underground city, subterranean, as damp, like a subway terminal, <laughs> damp and smelly. But the underground cities I'm talking about are beautiful. You wouldn't know you were in an underground city. The only difference is it'd be located in areas that would not support, ordinarily, human habitation.